Tom Ballantyne. He's the, the chief correspondent at Orient Aviation magazine. Tom, many thanks for joining us. I suppose the first question uh, that's going to be asked is a security one. How is this allowed to happen? Well, absolutely, and it's not that long ago that uh, someone managed to get a bomb on board a Russian aircraft, uh, killing all on board uh, in Egypt. Now, uh, a lot of questions that were raised at that time over security um, at Egyptian airports. The Egyptians said that they were beefing up security, uh, but there'll be a, a big investigation into how this managed to happen, how someone got on board an aircraft with a, a belt that they claim has explosives. Of course, we don't know at the moment whether that is true or not, uh, but still security should have picked that up. So many serious questions asked about security at Alexandria and other Egyptian airports. Now, the fact that uh, this hijacker has uh, released most of the passengers, uh, there are still some foreign nationals on board in, as well as the crew. I mean, what do we read into that? Is that a good thing? Well, it's 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 difficult. Um, it's it's a bad thing for the passengers who are still on board. Of course, we don't know where they come from at the moment. Are they European? Are they Americans? Uh, the first thought with something like this was it was it a terrorist uh, uh, event, uh, uh, an ISIS event, uh, which would explain them, you know, keeping uh, the the foreigners on board. Uh, but now there are suggestions this is actually some sort of a domestic issue uh, that this chap is uh, uh, is is complaining about or is taking action about. So there are many questions here that we just simply at the moment don't know the answers to. In terms of how the crew uh, are equipped to deal with an event like this, do they get any specific training? Is, is there an actual procedure in place? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, air crew, both the uh, pilots, uh, the cockpit crew and the uh, cabin crew uh, go through specific training to deal with situations such as this. Um, for instance, uh, you know, a pilot would probably have the cockpit door locked or should have the cockpit door locked, but the um, uh, flight attendants would have had to phone him to tell him that they had this man in, in, uh, on board the aircraft, um, and they would have a code word or some sort of a code, innocent type code phrase that they would use which would tell the pilot right away that there was an issue and he wouldn't be taking any chances. He would obviously open the door and do what this person wanted uh, uh, because they would have to assume uh, that uh, this person did in fact have explosives. But the pilot would also be able to uh, tell the ground that there was an event on board the aircraft, would be able to inform air traffic control uh, by once again using a certain phrase um, in his calls to air traffic control. What happens now? We know negotiations are ongoing. What is, what is the strategy in terms of authorities? How are they dealing with this? Well, the, the authorities, they will have expert negotiators um, at the airport. They will talk to this person. They will want to know what the problem is. Does he have any demands? Uh, why has he gone to Cyprus? Uh, what does he want? And then they'll have to look at how they can talk him down, how they can perhaps uh, give him some of what he wants, get him to release the other passengers. It'll be a, it could be a long, slow negotiation, depending on what the whole issue is in the first place. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Should we be preparing for a long standoff? Uh, I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say that we, we're getting a feeling now that this could be a personal uh, issue in terms of the hijacker's agenda. I'm not sure there ever is a, a good situation in terms of a hijacking, but could this be a, a positive uh, news for the passengers that it might not be a terrorist act? Well, yes, in, in, in fact, it could be. I mean, I, I heard that suggestion that he had an estranged wife who was in Cyprus. Well, I'm pretty sure that if that is, the, if that, that is actually the case, the authorities will be getting a hold of that estranged wife uh, and getting her to the airport to help in the negotiations. Um, and that's one thing that may help them talk this person down and get them off the aircraft safely. Uh, now, it's not been confirmed, but we, uh, according to the pilot, uh, he was wearing some sort of suicide uh, belt. How difficult is it to get this sort of equipment uh, onto the aircraft in the first place? Well, it should be very, very difficult. I mean, this is a real concern in terms of the security of commercial aviation. And uh, uh, yeah, many, many airlines are using 
Alexandria and Cairo Airport in, in Egypt. Uh, international carriers flying in and out of there all the time. Um, it should have been picked up in the X-ray uh, by security staff. Uh, uh, security staff are supposed to be trained to look out for suspicious people, to look at the way they're acting. Uh, but this certainly should have been picked up before this person got onto the aircraft. It is a very, very serious incident and a great concern to the aviation industry. Uh, let, let's go back again and, and, and discuss uh, the Egyptian airport security uh, situation. Uh, do you think this illustrates a lapse in their security? Oh yes, absolutely. There's no doubt, no doubt about that. Uh, uh, once this is all over, whatever the outcome is, there will be some sort of serious investigation, um, not only by the Egyptian authorities, but international bodies such as the International Air Transport Association, the International Civil Aviation Organization, uh, will want to be going to Egypt um, to look at the security measures and carry out an audit of the security systems um, uh, and, and see that things are corrected. Uh, okay, many thanks for uh, speaking to us.